right. The epoxy has had plenty time to uh, cure up, so we're good to go. I'm gonna wrap this blade again just to protect it. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take it over the bandsaw, we're gonna cut these off, and then we're gonna start grinding down the sides, because we are super fat right now, 1.2 inches, so almost an inch and a quarter. And uh, we need to grind this down so it's not nearly so chunky. I mean, this is a chunky monkey, but it's a little bit too chunky of a monkey at the moment. So let's grind this down, and then we'll flush up all the edges, and then we'll get ready to lay out our lines so we can add some really comfortable profiles to this. And then we're also going to grind in a little bit of a thumb groove, a little relief right here. I always like to have those because just where the meat of my thumb ends up, I really like having a little spot where it kind of rests inside of the handle. So that's the next step. Okay, so we've gone ahead and flattened out the scales. We ground these down so that we ended up grinding past where those slots, those screw slots were. Got this taken down, then we profiled everything to the tang. Now what I'm gonna do with this one is, I'm gonna taper the back end of it a little bit. I'm gonna give myself a few reference marks. So if I put this in my hand, and I always kinda like to look at, you know, this, this is what I call the palm swell. I mean, it's like, you know, you got your thumb, and you, the outer pad of your hand. I always like to try and shape it so that when I'm holding the knife, it's, we're gonna have a swell right here, so it fits nicely into this spot of the hand. And I'm gonna say that it's gonna be about like right here to right here. And all I'm gonna use, these are gonna be some basic lines that I'm gonna grind to. I usually, when I'm doing the, um, the cutout here for the thumb, I don't get too crazy tapering this part down, but I do wanna taper this back quite a bit. So um, I'm not gonna mark on there, I'm actually gonna use a ruler, or our square or something, and I'm just kinda using the lines of this pin as a guide. Actually, if I go like this and line up the two edges of the pin, obviously every knife's gonna be a little bit different, but you can kinda just work with what you've got. And we've got roughly something nice and straight there. Keep these roughly parallel. And then I'm gonna transfer those marks to the other side. That's pretty good. And then we can just kind of do roughly the same lineup method on this. So I'm using these pins as kind of like my line that I'm kind of gauging everything by. And then we'll just keep this one roughly even and boom. Now I've got a pretty good little starting point where I can grind to. And what I'll do is I'll taper this end in. I'm gonna actually make myself a mark. Same method, I'll use like a pencil down on something flat. I can shim it up how I need to. And we'll kind of put a mark like that, and then I will take a straight edge, a flexible one. These real flexible ones are really handy. And I'll actually go ahead and put this on here and kind of wrap it around the curvature there, and I'll mark that line in. So I'll have an exact representation of where I want to grind. And it's in pencil, it's a little hard to see against this wood, but I'll bring the camera in here a little closer when I actually do this stuff, and hopefully that kind of makes sense. But that way I've got lines to grind to, and I like to keep everything flat before you start rounding it. So when I grind these in, I'm gonna grind it flat and you'll be able to see if you're grinding even on your grinder or not because of how straight this line is. So I can bring this one up, we'll bring this one up a little bit. And then once we've got that profile in this reference plane here, then we can start rounding it out and getting all those features that we want. And actually before I start rounding it out, I'm gonna go ahead and cut in these little thumb grooves. But first let's get these lines laid out and put in our tapers that we'd like to see on this knife.
on the back side and then we'll do the other side. Now the lines are fairly faint, but we can see them there. I can see them a lot better than they're showing up on camera. But those are going to be what we're going to grind to. So I'll just come in like this, grind, 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 grind. And then we'll put in our holes and I'll show you kind of how I go about that. And then we'll start making this thing comfy. A comfy chunky monkey. Alright, so I figured I'd jump in with a little voice over here. When I'm doing these little thumb grooves, I use a 5 inch contact wheel. I like that size, I think it's a really good size for this. And essentially I just do a little bit of a grind, I'm, I'm resting the knife on the work rest, and I just continually keep checking. And the goal is just to make that little groove keep it centered in the handle. It looks fairly complicated, but I was actually really surprised how easy it was when I did it for the first time. It's worth giving it a shot if you've never done this before. And then once I've got it mostly established, I can just kind of go in there and finesse it, move it up or down a little bit, freehand, much like you would on a bevel once you've started the initial bevel with a grinding jig. And then we're just gonna start putting the nice contours on the handle and making it more comfortable. I'm using my radius platen for this, and then I end up using a scallop belt with the platen removed, just between two wheels. All right, so we have got most of the handle shaping done on the belt grinder and my goal ultimately is to be able to do all the handle shaping 100% on the belt grinder and I, I'm still trying to work towards that. Right now all I'm going to do is uh, basically just refine the scratches so I'm not going to be not going to be taking any material off and the whole time I'm doing this on the grinder I'm always checking back and forth making sure we're symmetrical stuff like that. So what we're gonna do now is jump to the hand sanding. And one thing I really like to do for that is this stuff here is called 3M, I don't know what it's called, Prograde Precision Ultra Flexible Sanding Sheets. This stuff is amazing. It's got a little stretch to it, and I typically will cut it into strips about one inch wide, lengthwise, and use those, and I can get two or three knife handles done on one strip. So this stuff lasts a really long time and I go up to 320, so what this allows you to do is get rid of the worst of the scratches on the blade, and then um, it still kind of is gentle, so it smooths everything out, it'll kind of lessen those hard lines there, although these ones have come out fairly even on both sides, so I kind of want to keep them, but I want to just soften them up a little bit. I still want to be able to see them when you look at the knife, but to me that is a little bit too hard right there, so we're just going to soften that up, the 320, and then I'll grab some of my papers up there, and we'll go from like a 400, 800, and then we'll jump to 1,000 and 2,000 grit to finish this thing off. For the hand sanding, I'm gonna be using my Knife Maker's Vice, and this is one I made. I did a video about this, maybe I'll see if I can link it up in the corner, this corner. This thing has been rock solid, beefy as all get out, and um, I've just got this little cam right here, so when I drilled the pinhole that pulls up on this bottom plate, I off-centered it, and that way I can loosen it off, spin it around, Tighten her back down, and it uh, works really good. Also have this adjustment in here so I can move it up or down as I need to. And the one thing I've noticed with this is just with the design of this one, um, if the blade doesn't go through very far, really it's just this side clamping down, this side kind of floats. So what I do is I put a piece of material in the same thickness of the blade that I'm sanding, and that really helps this whole issue clamp, because this is essentially just two pieces of wood. One here and one here, so that blade in the middle really helps me able to lock this sucker down. And uh, yeah, it's a good little unit. I use this thing all the time and it was well worth the time and effort to build one.
the last thing I'm going to do is get out my old Fordham. And I've got a little black buffer on here, and I want to buff the inside of the lanyard tube. I was being careful. Now, I was being careful when I glued it up to make sure I just kind of wiped out any big chunks of epoxy in there. And then after it hardened, I just took a, a punch and just kind of flicked it out. It didn't really bond to it because it was nice and smooth in there. But I just want to kind of give it a buff, just clean it up a little bit. It's kind of like an unfinished stainless steel. This pin, unfortunately, the tubing that I used was a seamed tubing. So it means that they actually roll it together and they put a bead of weld down. The outside, they turn it or polish it so you can't tell. But on the inside, you can see a seam. There's not a lot we're going to be able to do about that. But... We clean the inside up, it's going to look a lot better. Get a little bit of uh, black compound on here. Okay. Get a clean cloth and uh, just kind of stick it through. Some, some uses in the shop are good for paper towels. Stuff like this, I like to buy these. These are just the rags from Costco. You can actually yank on them pretty hard. And that looks pretty good. Because there's kind of no real good way to show it, but nice and clean, nicely finished off. So I think that's pretty much bringing us very close to the end of this build. Let's uh, take this tape off. We may need to give it a little bit more of a kind of a buff just to make sure. You know, we can get all the tape residue off of there and stuff. Oh, the one thing I actually need to do is I've only got this to about 220. So usually what I'll do at the very end, I'll put on a 600 grit or higher belt and just do real light passes on the contact wheel. Just so we can kind of just refine that grain a little bit more, smooth it all nice, and then we'll just give it one more quick little buff. And that way it'll just, just be really nice and clean. The other thing I do need to do to this knife is put the gentleman's initials right here. He wanted them right in the back of the tang, so I'm going to do that. I've got to put my maker's mark on here. And then this thing will be good to go. We're going to sharpen it up. It's going to get a Kydex horizontal carry sheath. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a wha-pow. There you go. But this turned out very, very comfortable in the hand. I'll give you kind of a close-up of the handle there. The camera, there we go. So that thumb contouring there, it's on both sides, so... Doesn't matter who's holding this, if you're using your right hand or your left hand, it just feels so good. That little thumb relief, you kind of see what I'm talking about there? It's just a wonderful, wonderful little knife. Um, I prefer it, and uh, it's kind of the signature of the Chunky Monkey. They have all had that on it, so. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think we're just going to finish cleaning it up, and then uh, show you some beauty shots.